the biggest purchases by far are made by Prime customers. And there's another interesting phenomenon. If you look at Prime customers, a year before they become a Prime customer, they actually spend half of what they spend in the first year where they become a Prime customer. And two years later, they actually spend three times. So it's a growing amount of spending that basically grows as we become more accustomed to the vendor and we actually develop trust. So it's really all about the trust between the customers and the vendor. And this trust is so important and this loyalty is so important that it's actually been identified a few, uh, a long time ago, actually more than 100 years ago it's been identified. And loyalty programs date back to more than 150 years back where companies decided that they want to capture your loyalty. So how do they do that? Not having digital technologies, it was all about booklets. They would actually give you stamps every time you pump gas in a gas station or shop at a grocery store or a supermarket and so on, you would get those stamps. And you had those little booklets where the children in the home would actually stick the stamps in the booklet and then you can actually go and redeem in shops which were actually dedicated for redemption of gifts. So that really is the basic start of building programs. However, if we actually look at some very interesting statistics about loyalty programs and about uh, consumer spending, we're going to find out that only 20% of customers of a certain brand are loyal customers. However, make no mistake, those 20% of customers actually drive 80% of your profit. 80% of your profit comes from 20% of your customers. And it actually makes a lot of sense. The reason is simple because it's very easy to convert customers who are already loyal to your brand. It's actually three times higher or even four times higher conversion rate and they spend about 70% more. So it's super important for brands to focus on retaining their customers. And there's another interesting good news about this whole equation. Retaining a customer costs you uh, one divided by seven, actually a seven of what it would cost you to get a new customer. So it costs you 700% more to get a new customer, which is not going to spend as much as your existing customer. So you better focus on the existing customers because the new customers are expensive. So talking about that, let's talk about a very interesting mathematical uh, deep dive. We're gonna do some mathematics here. No, I'm just joking. But I'll give you two examples. So the first example is actually company one who has a 20% growth of new customers on an annual basis. However, it only has an 85% retention rate. What do I mean by that? It means that 15% of their customers are going to be leaving the brand every year. So it means that the net growth is 5%. That's 20 minus 15, that's five. Company number two is gonna focus on retention and they're going to focus on retention of 95%. In other words, only 5% of the customers leave the brand. What it brings them is to triple the growth of company number one. And triple the growth is just in the net amount of customers. But because we all know that the existing customers spend much more, your profits are not going to be just triple, they're going to be much higher. How higher? And that's the interesting statistics here. 5% increase in customer retention, and that's been done by two separate studies, one by Bain and Co, and one by Harvard Business School, actually accounts to an increase in profit of between 25 and 95 percent. Hard to believe, but completely true. So you better focus on retaining your existing customers. And how do you retain your existing customers? How do you drive that loyalty? Well, we all heard about loyalty programs. Maybe you raise your hand, who of you actually fly Korean Airways and have a loyalty program where you get some miles there? I guess a lot of you do, um, but obviously this whole world of loyalty points and miles, it's a huge world. We're talking about big airlines, hotel chains, and different types of other organizations which all gives you points and miles. That's a $500 billion a year market, as Alexis Kirkia, my friend, was saying. It's a huge market. And that market is actually very similar uh, in terms of the technology behind it to blockchain because we're giving away points and miles. And those points and miles are actually value carriers. So blockchain is one of the interesting, um, one of the interesting technologies to actually power this uh, change in the loyalty world. Because actually this loyalty world has a lot of promise as we've heard. And what's the promise? The promise is that if you actually do a really good loyalty program, 
your customers are going to recommend you more. Actually, 70% of customers say that they will recommend the brand which has a good loyalty program. 77% of customers actually say they're going to stay within your brand. So, that you're going to have a higher retention. And actually, 63% say that they're going to spend more with your brand. And that's again well known. So, it's really worthwhile to have a really good functioning loyalty program. But, there is also some interesting statistics behind how loyalty programs really work behind the scenes. So first of all, if we look at the US alone, the loyalty program membership number is steadily growing. So we're actually at a point where there's close to 4 billion individual members in the US market alone for loyalty programs. So that's about 29 loyalty programs per person, which is a lot. But actually most people don't really focus on most loyalty programs. They only focus on, only 9% of people focus on all loyalty programs. The rest are not really active. So if we look at the big challenge in the industry, we see that a lot of people don't care about the loyalty programs they're signed up to. Actually the number is 54% of customers are not active. Not active means we give them points, we give them miles, and they just don't do anything about it. So that's a major industry problem. And the reason why they don't really care about it is because they just don't see the value. And if we're talking about assets, just like anything, if I give you loyalty points where you cannot use them, and you cannot maybe upgrade your flight to a business class, or you cannot even buy a hamburger with those points, you don't see the value in those points. And that's, the reason is because there's no liquidity. You can't sell it, you can't change it, you can't use it, so it's worthless. And that's called the liquidity discount. And in some cases, the liquidity discount is 100%. So, actually, there's a lot of negative social media sentiment about loyalty programs. 90% of all the posts are quite negative. People tend to post negatively. And actually, most of the people say that loyalty programs are hard to earn and they're hard to spend. And that basically means that for companies who are actually launching loyalty programs, they see very major challenges. They see that customers are not active. And actually, 80% of customers after about five years just disappear from the program at all. They just never stay in the program. And if you look at the total number of loyalty points which are given every year, from a 500 billion, 250 billion expire every year. And that's an amazingly bad figure. So, obviously there is a, a trend in the market, and that's called the coalition trend. Because consumers like the possibility to have flexibility where they can earn their points and where they can spend their points. So, if we have a coalition, like for example, Korean Airlines is part of SkyTeam, and SkyTeam is KLM, Korean Airlines.